Okay, everyone, we're back. Now we're going to look at working with variables. So we want to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and practice what we've learned so far. We've gone over working with variables. We've gone over overview of modules and procedures. Working with modules, the code window, creating the sub procedure. And we're going to actually create a sub procedure in a moment, but it's kind of like that the, the, if you haven't done so already. Working with variables is like, is like, um, well, it's about as close as w whatever we're, we're going to get to. Whatever we get, get into the, in, in future, future modules. So first of all, I want to go ahead and de declare uh, variables. Declare a variable to, to harness a, a user's name. So we want to get the user's name and then what their uh, what their their current commission rate is, what they sold so far. So DMS your name, SDR name. And then SDR name equals input box input box what is your name? What is your name? And my error came up because I didn't put a close quote on it. Close parentheses, sorry. Close parentheses. And then. Oh, sorry. I didn't put a beginning parentheses. Or, ah! Okay. Then I'm going to say, uh, I want to also get a variable to hold it. Variable to hold what their, what their amount is, dmdl amount, as double. So dbl amount equals input box, what was your sales is your input. I'll finish it off so I don't forget this. I what were what are your sales this year, man? What are your sales this year? And then I want to have a, a DVL amount and then DVL total. That's what they. That's what their DBL total amount is. A message box. I'm gonna finish it off by saying, MSG BOX. S your name. And, comma. Okay, we're putting the expression here. Your commission. is okay now I want to that's my that's what I'm saying that's my expression now I'm gonna do a, a some math expression so I'm gonna say I'm gonna put uh, this in parentheses DBL amount time because it, it's better organized with this with the parentheses times 0.15 Okay, I did put I didn't put my glue. What I like to call the glue, my ampersands. <clears throat> I didn't put any glue there. 
So here I'm going to run this. What is your name? My name's Joe. What are you seeing this year? $32,000. I'm going at real low. Uh, low ball on it. <clears throat> Joe, your commission is 4800 bucks. Wow, that's really exciting. So, what if I make it a little bit more than that? So, uh, what if your name is Sue? And you made uh, $320,000 this year. Okay. Your, Sue, your commission is $48,000. Okay. Now, notice that the, the 48 does doesn't look that good. So, I'm going to use what's called a... A formatter, okay, like a, a, a what's called a format, the format function to do, it. Um, and that's gonna make it make that DBL amount look a little bit better, whatever whatever turns up in this box right here, whatever that turns up in this box, and here I'm gonna I could you know this I don't want it to look real messy. So I'm gonna just add myself another variable here called dim dbl total. I don't really need this, but I'm gonna go ahead and add it anyway, just because otherwise it's gonna look messy. It's a dbl total equals, and then I'm gonna say I want this. Oh boy. So DBL total. When I get here, I'm gonna say I'm gonna format this nicely. After I get it after I get the value for DBL total, I'm gonna use what's called the format function. Format to format total. And then my format is gonna be a, you may have used this when you're using the input mask. Okay. Remember that number signs number signs mean optional. And here that's required. So I'm gonna put a zero. Zeros are required. And then uh, the optional pennies. Optional pennies. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and run it. What's your name? My name is Lou. Lou. What did you make this year, Lou? Two hundred forty thousand dollars. Oh, Lou, your commissions are thirty-six thousand dollars. Well, golly. It didn't format my stuff. So, what could I have done wrong? DBL, your commission is DBL total. So they have to look back at. That brings up a good point. What happens when you're trying to diagnose your thing, your your code? Well, you want to step through and see the variables. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little breakpoint right here. Okay, you see my. You left click in this sidebar here, and you put a little breakpoint there. And then I'm going to go ahead and run this. I'm going to say my name is Lou. Louie. Let's say Louie. And then my sales are 120. Why well, didn't I format? Okay, that's, that's my question. So we're, we're, what is it at this point? Notice that the, the yellow means that you're, you stop the code at that point. So 1800 bucks. I can hover over and see the value of it. 1800 bucks, and my amount was this 1200 times this amount. So that's how I get 1800 bucks. When it comes down here, I say format DBL total as this. Oh, and it didn't format. Huh. 
Let's see. Let's see what happened with this. Let's see what happened to it. My format function didn't work right. Format. My format function didn't work right. Let's see. I gotta pause this to find out why it's doing that. Alrighty then, I'm back. Now the reason why I didn't format it was because a DBL cannot, and maybe I maybe guess is already, so you can answer ahead, ahead of me. DBL total, a double cannot have any type of characters in it. So we did characters in it. So. Uh, we could say DBL total, F we could call it SCR total. Like a dollar, a DBL, a double data type, cannot have any any type of characters, like a dollar sign. So I'm going to go ahead and call it SCR total. Then, that's indiscriminative. And I could put a SCR tool on both of these and it, it will work right. Okay, so I have my DBL total. Now notice how it works. Ah, very cool. And since I have no pennies, I'm going to get rid of this. I, was, I, get, I can move this little little thing back, little breakpoint back to where where it was. I can say, okay, my total, Louis, your commission is $1,800. So that looks a little better. Remember, you cannot, inside of a DBL total, inside of a double data type, you can put these characters like a dollar sign and a comma. Okay, so use the string instead. So that is, that is the solution to our problem. Okay, so adding code readability, putting comments, adding comments because uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and add a comment. You put in a put an apostrophe here to add a comment. Rem the things out. Okay, by remming, I mean you could type <coughs> R E M. Okay, not the band, but R E M, and then comment. Notice that REM turns into it turns into uh, uppercase because it it VBA knows what REM stands for. So you could also use a apostrophe that works just fine. In some languages use use this character. Some languages use this character. Okay, they, but VBA uses uses the uh, I'm trying to do this for looking looking at a keyboard. If you're a hunting peg, you really know how to be fast to be a program. I guess you could if you get you get copy and paste. Okay, copy paste is that's what I found out. Anyway, uh, so we have RAM comment. So double. This is stuff you you're gonna need to write comments in your code to help you remember what you've done. And the, uh, if you come back a month or six months later, you're gonna wonder why why you do things a certain way. Well, comment it. Double data type. Uh, can't. Can't. Have special characters. Okay, so it's green. It turns into green. So that comments add code readability. 
you may want to go ahead and break it across different lines. So if you want to rinse, if you have a real long comment, if you like all this stuff, and you say, oh, I, don't, I don't really want this on this line. I want it on the next line. Okay, you could do an underscore like that, and then pop it down the next the next line. Okay, line continuation character. So that those allow you to enhance the readability of your code. Now on to on to other things. Uh, conditional structure. We kind of touched on this before, but we have like if structures, like case structures. Okay, we're going to cover those two things. So both of them control program flow. So if statements, if statements. So if something is true, then do this. If something is false, then do this. If something is true, then do this. If else, if something is not this, if something equals this. this. And uh, if then else uh, could be substituted with a select case, it looks a bit better. So anyway, we'll cover we'll cover a few of these. Yeah, back at our uh, back at our module here, again our test. Okay, format. Notice how I use this media pane. Media pane can be like. A, Use as a calculator. Okay, if you don't have a calculator handy, you can do uh, question mark one plus one, and you get two. You can do real complicated math too. Like if you want to test some, see if it works. Uh, let's say one and and text. Okay. So anyway, it's like a little little computer, little computer. That's what your immediate pain is, <clears throat> and it also tests for variables up here. And I was using that before to find out why I was doing what I was doing, what I wanted, why I wouldn't do what I wanted to do. All right. So if here's how you do it on one line, the if statement on one line. If int answer equals equals one then true then true oh, then BLN correct <clears throat> equals true sorry if I had the answer that's that's using your if statement on one line. So if I need the answer equals one, then be like correct equals true. Sometimes you want to do it on one line. Or you may see somebody did it one line and wonder how they did it on one line. Well, if, so as long as you don't have any errors, uh, you're going to be if then true. No, if it's red, you have an error. Be like correct, you have an, you're going to have a uh, correct like this. But it, I don't know if it makes sense. If int answer equals one, then be incorrect equals true. Yeah, it'll it's it's true enough. It's kind of logical, logic, logic. So if then. Now the other way to do this on multiple lines. So we have if answer. Oh, notice that you don't want to put an and if in here. But with Visual Basic and with Visual Basic for application, you have to put an and if if it's on multiple lines. You don't have to add, use an and if in like languages like PHP or uh, other other languages. You don't have to put an and if. But on VBA, you do have to have an and if if you put it on different lines. So if int answer equals one, then be like correct is true and if. Okay, and that's uh, multiple multiple lines, multiple lines. Now your most common and is the if then else, if then else, or if then else, if. <laughs> so get very very common, very confusing. So if int answer equals one, 
else I G answer equals to oh else sorry so if it equals one thing then true if it does if it doesn't equal one then it's false Okay, I was thinking of the else if. So, if ing answer is 1, then it's correct. Otherwise, BLI correct equals false. Okay, BLA answer. If ing answer is 1, then correct. Else, BLA correct equals false. Alright, so... Then you have your answer for uh, you have your selection for uh, for if else else if and if okay so that's really really confusing that's when you would use a select case instead but uh, just for grins that the example of that would be uh, let's say dim as your answer. I guess we could do uh, dim int answer as enter. So if answer is one, then then do this. Else if int answer equals two then do this else do this okay if it's one if it's one then do this else if answer is two then do this else do this again the this structure is uh, used, but I would say to, to enhance your, their user readability experience to change it to a select case. Okay, you have to you have to make that make that yourself. I would say, okay, to to change this out to make it a select case stand. We're going to use the same dimension answer. So select. Sorry, select case. Int answer case one case two case else. and select I'm going to show you how, how much easier it is to read this I maybe you can already see it so we have these two are both the same yeah, I'm going to take this window down because we're going to use the Amita pin right now. So I'm going to go ahead and close it because we don't need it right now. Okay, look at look at both these structures here. This is my if structure. This is my select case. Select case, sorry. Select case. That's why I had this box there. So select case, INT answer. So if the answer is one, do this. Case if the answer is two. Again, we're looking at S the INT answer. Then do this. Do this. Otherwise do this. Look at that in comparison to this. So we have INT answer equals one, then do this. Else if INT answer equals two, then do this. Else do this. Uh, if you ask me, this is more confusing. So this is your select case statement. 
That's your select A segment. So I would choose that as a, a better, more readable solution to your to your uh, your conditional to your conditional statements. Okay. All right. So we're going to take a little break and then come back and we'll go ahead and put all this together.